Hello, friends. Um, this is kind of weird. I don't know. <laughs> I'm filming and I'm home. I'm home, I'm home, I'm home. I'm back home with my books, with my my family as well. <laughs> but my books. It feels weird filming here. This is my first time. I've filmed a few vlog clips since I've been back, but like, this is crazy. I'm actually, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling very motivated. We've come back just as it's spring. The weather's getting me in a good mood. I'm feeling great. When I did come back though, when I walked into my bedroom, I was like, I have a lot of books. That's a bit excessive. <laughs> That's not normal. And I think, you know, you should maybe get some help or something. I was like, maybe, I'm starting to think I have a problem. Also, I know we're getting off topic. We just need to catch up, but we'll talk about the video in a second. But I have no room left for books on my bookshelf. So until I move out, like the big move out that we're hopefully gonna do this year, um, there's there's no room <laughs> for the books I read this year. Like I, I don't have room. I don't have room. I have made room. Oh, there's a book missing here, but that's because my dad's reading it right now. But I don't have room for any more books to read. I have to stop reading. <laughs> I genuinely don't know what I'm gonna do with the books I read for the rest of the year because that is packed pretty tight up in here. Anyways, so today I thought I would do a video, which I've done once before, and it is These Books Will Self-Destruct in One Year. This is originally created by Becca in the Books, I believe, and I did it once, and then I reacted to it last year when it had been a year, and I refused to unhaul the books. <laughs> I have not read all the books on this list. I can't remember all of them, but I know for sure there's at least one or two that I still really want to read, and I, I'm not gonna unhaul. Run the clip, we know what's happening. <laughs> The rules don't apply. I'm not gonna unhaul them. I, I want to read these books. They're on my TV. I'm not unhauling them. I don't care. I'm not unhauling them. I'm doing it again. And this this time, I promise, I have picked six books. No, it's not six books. I've picked eight books. I have six here because two are wrapped up. I've picked eight books that if I don't read them in a year, I am gonna unhaul them. I promise. I promise. I think I've struck a good balance with these books that I've included. They're books I still really want to read and figure out what I think of them, but if I have to unhaul them, I can live with it. You know, the ones, when I did it before, I did my stupid thing where I'm like, I'm putting books on here to motivate myself, and then I don't read them. I'm like, um, I really want to read that book. What the fuck? <laughs> So we're going to chat through these books and I'm going to tell you why I haven't read them yet and why I'm a bit tentative to do so. And if I don't read them in a year, we have to unhaul them. Um, also, my neighbours are having some, like, their windows done. There's a lot of drilling. So I'm going to just try and fill them around that. But if you hear the occasional bang, we're going to live with it. If you think I should really rush to read any of these books and prioritise them and make sure I read them before I unhaul them, please let me know in the comments down below. First book we have is The Whisper Man by Alex North. Firstly... I fucking hate this cover. I think this is one of the most hideous covers I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, it's actually offensive to me. It's offensive. It's- I hate it. I wanna know, what does it feel like to be so goddamn ugly? There's like this butterfly wing, but it's got like skulls and like a b bones. Ugh, photoshopped badly onto it, and then there's like this random nail. The US cover to this is nice. I don't know what happened here, but this is a thriller that was popular a couple years ago. When has come out? 2021, I want to say? 2019, oh dear. <laughs> Whoa. So I feel like I'm just not motivated to read it anymore because who's talking about this now? Who's talking about this now? People spoke about it in 2019. No one's speaking about this now. We've got a father and a son. They moved to this town where there was a serial killer like 15 years ago. And then I think murders start happening again or people start going missing again. I heard good things about this when it came out, but I just have had yeah, no inclination to read it any anymore. <laughs> I'm completely honest with you. I got this at the works here in the UK where you can get like three books for five pounds sometimes, or like, you can get them very cheap. I think it maybe is a little bit more now, but I think it used to be three for five pounds. Anyways, so I, I did get this very cheap, so it's not like, oh my god, I spent loads of money on it and I'm unhauling it. I just don't know if this is my kind of thriller anymore, you know? I think maybe I got this when I was still figuring some of my tastes out, and I really understand my taste a lot better now. So yeah, I, I, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. There's a lot of these are old books. They've been on my TBR for quite a while and we've gotta we've gotta read them or get them off. I really think I've made a good list here, guys. I'm not gonna refuse to unhaul these in a year. But I did tell a bit of a lie there. Next we have got Dark and Shallow Lies by Ginny Myers Sane. Out of all the ones on this list, I feel like this is the one of the ones I've heard the best things about. I feel like when people, not a lot of people have read this, but I do feel that when people pick it up, they do really enjoy it. And really the synopsis sounds like something I should love. It's just YA and I'm not really reading YA anymore. 
I'm sorry to say, I'm not really reading YA anymore, which makes me sad. Like, I do love YA, and I wanna, the book I wanna write, originally, the, the book I wanted to write is YA, but now I'm thinking I'm not reading enough YA anymore to necessarily know innately, how, like, what's good. You know, like you, you have to be, I think, very tapped into the genre you're writing. So anyways, we've got a missing girl, a town full of psychics, a secret that won't stay buried. So we're in a small town in Louisiana. Our main girlie's best friend has gone missing and she discovers a connection between her best friend's disappearance and a pair of grisly murders 13 years earlier. Oh, interesting. Some of the, some of the dates for these flashbacks. So I really like the sound of the setting in this Louisiana, the heat, the, the swamps, the like dark magic like I feel like it could have a really good vibe to it and I have heard really good things but when I look at it do I feel inclined to read it not really <laughs> not really if I'm honest with you so you know all of these books are ones that I either I need to kick up the ass to read or just let go of you know so I don't know we shall see but I'm not reading a ton of YA and when I just flick through it so the way that it it's written I feel like it's very YA like very young YA when I'm looking at just like the cadence and like the length of the sentences and the way it's written I just don't know I just don't know we have another YA on the list and that is After Love by Tanya Burns it's another very popular one I have a fairy loot edition I think these two girls are together and I think one of them dies yeah one of them dies and the dead one gets an invitation from the afterlife she can't decline to join a clan of fierce girl reapers who take the souls of the city's dead to a Wait their fate. That sounds a little bit like, you know, I'm not like other girls. Okay. I'm like quirky. Like but Ash can't forget her first love Poppy and she'll do anything to see her again even if it only means they get a few more days together dead or alive. So that that's the situation now. No, 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 it's YA again. The more I think about it though, I have enjoyed a lot of YA romances that I've read. I really enjoy the stuff from Crystal Maldonado. I just read Check and Mate by Ellie Hazelwood, although that is like, it's really just YA, if we're honest with ourselves. <laughs> Ali is pushing the boundaries there. So I do enjoy a lot of the YA romance that I read. Heartstopper could be seen as YA romance, but I just, I just don't know if it's a little bit quirky paranormal romance, but not in a way that I would eat up. Do you know what I mean? The more I think about this now, I want a book, when I pick it up, I want to feel like it has the possibility of being a five star. Do I feel like this has a possibility of being a five star? No. Do I think it could be a 3.5 or a four? Absolutely. Yeah, I think I could enjoy this. But like, if I'm picking a book up and I don't think it will be a five star, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? What choices am I making? What has led me down this path? So yeah, please let me know what you think because I'm, I'm torn on this one, but I feel like a lot of you might have read this, so let me know if you enjoyed it. Then we've got a book I don't know much about. I'm gonna be honest, I got sent this by the publisher in kind of like a selection of books I got sent, and this was one, probably the one in the selection that I was least interested in. It's The Murders at Fleet House by Lucinda Riley. She's a number one Sunday Times bestseller, but I'm so sorry, girl, I have not heard of you. I assume this is the kind of stuff that like people pick up in supermarkets. It does very, very well in terms of sales, but like, you don't hear people talking about it. Do you know what I mean? There's quite a culture of that, I feel like, with UK books. There can be books that fucking sell so much, but like, who is who is reading them? I've never heard any, I've never heard anyone speak about this. So we've got Detective Inspector Jazz Hunter. See, this does not this sound really good. It isn't long before she's on a potential murder scene at a nearby private boarding school, an incident the headmaster is determined to write off as a tragic accident. As it becomes clear that the victim was tangled in a web of loyalties and old vendettas that go far beyond just one student, as the body count begins to grow, Jazz knows she's running out of time. So it's like a boarding school, secrets, academia, murders. Like it does sound like everything I should enjoy. So this is kind of one out of all of these that I think I'm not incentivized to read it. But if I were to read it, I think I could really enjoy it. Like the cover just doesn't excite me. Like if you're giving me a boarding school, it's kind of, we just talk about this for a second. A private boarding school, murder mystery, book with an inspector and your cover is some moors and a shed like what this cover is not giving me what the book is it's giving it's giving share that doesn't convey to me what this book is about it's a problem oh they're banging let's stop talking for a second 
So yeah, I feel like this has a lot of potential, but again, it's not one I look at and I'm super excited to read. Next we have two books from Book of the Month that I got when they used to send out like all the books of the month when you did sponsorships with them. Now they just, you pick a few. So there was always a few books I'd get that weren't the top, you know, on top of the books I would pick. But I'm still very much intrigued. I've been very much intrigued by all the books I've ever gotten from Book of the Month because I think their selections are great. So it, we're 50-50 on this. But the first one is A Little Hope by Ethan Joella. I'm going to be honest, I don't know anything about this but I remember I've had a few comments in the past telling me that I'm going to enjoy it. So it says a luminous life-affirming novel set in an idyllic Connecticut town over the course of the year. So we're following a couple who find out that one of them has an aggressive form of cancer. We're following his boss grappling with a secret of his own. Someone, a woman coming to terms with the loss of her husband. So all these different characters in this small town. And I think it's gonna be very emotional, very heavy, very hard hitting. And I have enjoyed books like that. And also it's very short. It's only like 250-ish pages and the font is pretty big. So I don't think it's gonna take me long to read. So it definitely is one I think I should just read and get to. Sorry about the banging. I had to just stop filming for 20 minutes because they were making so much noise. I'm just hoping that it's not too obtrusive for you. Could you please have quiet in the studio? Quiet, please. <laughs> Fucking shut up! Thank you. This synopsis sounds great, but I just think this has been on my TBR now since the end of 2021. We're coming up, at the end of this year, it'll be three years. It's two and a half years it's been on my TBR and I haven't read it. So I do think it's time to say, if I don't read it in another year, three and a half years on your TBRs, I think is a fair time <laughs> to give something a shot. I think it sounds interesting. I think I've heard great things from you guys in the comments before, but again, I'm not feeling super motivated to pick it up. And then we have The Good Left Undone by Adriana Trigani. What is this one about? <laughs> because I don't remember. Family's matriarch has always been brusque and opinionated. Now she faces the end of her life. She is determined to share a long held secret with her family about her own mother's secret love story with her childhood friend and a dashing Scottish sea captain. The father that she never knew. Interesting. Okay, so it's like a family historical novel with a hint of romance, perhaps. This kind of reminds me of Next Year in Havana, which I really did not enjoy. Like family, like grandmother's romance story in her historical, maybe split timeline. I don't know. Here's the thing. We shall see. <laughs> We shall see what we think, but I'm not this this when we look at this we can all agree It does not scream Megan, you know, we look at this and we think, you know, she may enjoy it But it does not scream me in terms of like when I read historical I often like them to maybe be a mystery or fantasy like I really like historical with another genre but my experiences with historical romances have not been the best, have not been the best. So we'll see what I think of this one. Yeah, I don't look at it and think, oh my God, I can't wait to read that. Also, it's quite long, it's over 400 pages. Like, I just feel like it could be a bit of a slog. It could be a bit of a, you know, <laughs> difficult one to get through. It's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. Oh, and it's the brink of World War II. I've had enough with World War II books. I never want to read a World War II book ever again. Apart from, I'm going to read Warm Hands of Ghosts is World War One, isn't it? The new Catherine Arden one. And also it's Catherine Arden, so she can do anything she wants, yeah. Anyways, yeah, let me know what you thought of this if you have read it. And then the final two books on my list are wrapped up. So we have an opportunity to read them in the last few episodes of Wrapped Up this year. And if not, maybe I'll read them later on. First is Shine by Jessica Young, who I believe is is like a k-pop star i'm gonna be honest i have not heard the best things about this book i have not heard the greatest things about this book from people who've read it i think it's got a pretty low average rating it's a ya about a girl becoming a k-pop star so like a girl is writing what she knows and it's got a little bit of a romance in it as well i don't know boss <laughs> about this one this has been you know obviously it's wrapped up so it's been on my tbr for a long long time and i, I just i don't know i'm seeing a lot of two stars <laughs> when I scroll through the ratings. There's also some people who have enjoyed it. So we shall see. I think it's interesting reading something like this from someone who's been through the industry, but does it excite me? No, I, I kind of think that I would maybe dunk on this book and maybe this book doesn't need me to dunk on it. You know, sometimes when I think I'm not gonna enjoy a book, Let's just let it exist. We don't need to, I don't want to be negative, you know? So maybe it's best to just let this book exist without me ever reading it. And then we've got an interesting one. We've got The Dinner Guest by B.P. Walter. This is like a murder mystery thriller where there's this dinner party that I think this couple and a few of their friends host and by the end of them, one of them's killed. I can't remember who's killed. One of them's killed. <laughs> I think one of the couple's holding the knife. I don't know. This one's interesting because this is, I remember the, the, the reason I got this was because it's written by the guy who used to run Waterstone social media, which is not, you know, am I been, not been in focus for ages? 
Ay, 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 mamma mia. <laughs> I don't think that would necessarily get me excited to, to read a book now, but I was like, oh my god. I think it's an interesting thriller. I've owned it for a very long time. We'll see. We'll see. This one I'm tentative about because it's been, it's just been on my TBR for so long. It's been on my TBR for so long. I think it was also Waterstones Thriller of the Month, which also I'm sometimes a bit of a sucker for <laughs> Waterstones Thriller of the Month. Nowadays I'm finding I've read a lot of them though. Like because they do the paperback, it's like the year after the book has first come out. I'm finding I've read a lot of them nowadays. But anyways, 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 anyways. I think when I was first getting back into reading, it was kind of where I was finding some recommendations. I, yeah, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. It's how to write reviews. He's published a few other books. Um, the synopsis always sounded interesting to me. It kind of reminds me of like, like the whole, I don't know, it's the whole book set at the dinner party. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. You are so inquisitive, my darling. Because <laughs> that would be fun. That reminds me of like a play. You know when you go to a play, like an experiment. I used to go to plays a lot. I did drama up to A-level. I used to go to plays at the National Theatre a lot. You'd go see a play and it would be like, you know, set during one night, one evening. You know, you see a lot of those. And I think it's an interesting synopsis. However, if this is like, oh, we're at this dinner party for like the start of the book and then the rest of the book is something else, I might be a bit annoyed. Like it reminds me of the woman in the library. I thought the woman in the library has like a murder where someone dies in the library and it's someone at the, sitting at this table together who has committed the murder and I thought the whole book was going to be them in the library like trying to figure it out a locked room situation but then it ended up spanning months. I would like this book to be kind of contained I don't know if it will be, so we shall see. So there we go, everyone. That is the books I have to read within a year, plus the two that I wrapped up, or I have to unhaul them. Let me know how many of these you think I'm gonna read. These are books I'm less interested in reading than the ones I put on the list last time. However, <laughs> that was my downfall last time. So I don't know how many of these we're gonna read. We'll see, but we're gonna have to read them or we're gonna have to unhaul them. So let me know which of these you definitely think I should prioritize, any of them that you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was a quick one whilst I, sort my life out and get back to normal life. So it's a little bit of a quick one today. We've got a very exciting vlog coming this weekend, but I'll see you guys very soon in another video. Bye.